On how it's made, we usually stick to the show's title and show you how products are manufactured. But this next segment is about special effects makeup, the kind that makeup artists use on theater and movie actors. So in this case, we'll show you how it's made, but we'll also show you how it's applied. Watch as this special effects makeup artist works his magic to transform this 28-year-old woman into a senior citizen. After gelling her hair flat, he glues on a bald cap using a theatrical adhesive called Spirit Gum. He protects her eyebrows and eyelashes with petroleum jelly, then covers her face in alginate, a material for taking dental impressions. Then he applies wet plaster bandages. After 25 minutes, the materials harden into a mask. Now he lines it with plaster. In a half hour, the plaster hardens into a perfect replica of the woman's face. Like putting non-stick spray on a baking pan, he coats the model in a release agent. Then, using professional-grade plasticine, he begins to sculpt an elderly face. He smooths out the wrinkles with strong rubbing alcohol so they'll look realistic. He uses a bumpy rubber pad to give the skin an aged orange peel texture. The finished sculpture sits in water for two to three hours. This activates the release agent, detaching the plasticine from the plaster underneath. Now the artist carefully cuts the sculpture into sections. The number of pieces varies with the size and complexity of the mask. Now he can finally start producing the mold he'll use to cast the old lady face mask. First, he takes a thin plaster impression of each piece. Then he coats the impression in plaster to make the positive half of the mold. Once it hardens, he applies the plasticine piece to space the depth of the mold cavity. Then he coats that in plaster to create the negative half of the mold. When that hardens, he applies release agent to both mold cavities, pours in hot gelatin, then closes the mold. In a half hour, the gelatin hardens into a flexible replica of that particular piece of the plasticine sculpture. He then implants synthetic hairs to create eyebrows. Now, using surgical glue, he begins to apply the pieces, called prosthetics. He starts with the largest face piece first. It includes the nose, cheeks, neck, and upper lip. He cuts a hole in the chin area so that he can apply the chin piece. Now, the lower lip. He cuts off the excess, then glues the edges of the chin piece to the large face piece. Now, for the forehead. Again, he applies glue along the edges to connect it to the rest. To age the eyes, he uses contact lenses. They create a ring around the iris, a typical feature of elderly eyes. Using tweezers, he applies eye bags, again gluing the edges to the rest of the mask. And finally, some wrinkly eyelids. With the mask fully assembled, it's makeup time. Using a toothbrush, the artist sprays it unevenly over the mask, then smudges it with his fingers. This technique creates a realistic look because the human face, aged skin especially, has color variations. Using a very thin brush, he accentuates some wrinkles by creating depth with a darker color. Now, some freckles and age spots. And a gray wig. And finally, just a bit of lip color, because lips dull with age. All this takes an experienced makeup artist about a month of work. And such expertise doesn't come cheap. A major transformation like this for stage or screen can cost up to $10,000.